I've been in church all my life and you hear these phrases all your life. And you hear the old people in church growing up, he's kept us from dangers. Somebody been in church, seen and unseen. During this pandemic, that took a whole new meaning for me that God had, I, you don't know what's around you, but aren't you glad that the blood of Jesus and angels with swords are protecting you? I wish I could get a real praise from somebody in the room that's just grateful that he's kept you alive. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. We're grateful and thankful to God. I, I honor Pastor David and thank God for who he is. Come on, let's praise God for a wonderful, awesome pastor. Thank God for him and thank God for trusting me with this moment. And it's one thing to have somebody at your church when you are there. It's another thing to have somebody there when you're not there. So I thank God for his trust in me and I thank God for the entire pastoral and leadership staff. Come on, let's give your leaders a great hand. And thank God for this wonderful worship ministry and we are so, so powerfully affected by their ministry. I want to get to what my assignment is. As a matter of fact, um, uh, I am, I'm so excited. You get those, sometimes as preachers, you get those words that you just want to pour out and you have to to uh, kind of keep your own self calm because you know what's coming. <laughs> Amen. So I just want to get this out. I really want to get this out. And so we're excited. Listen, I did bring some product and to make it easier, uh, we brought uh, a relationship bundle and some of you have, have purchased some of my relationship stuff and so there we've got a relationship bundle and if you are uh, serious about being in a romantic relationship or you know somebody who needs some help because the reality is is just just because y'all saved and love each other don't mean you're gonna make it Okay, I'm just checking. I'm just checking to see if we got some real folk in here. Please understand, just because you pray together does not mean you can stay together. Because for many people, the prayer is all you have in common. I ain't nobody talking to me in here, please. So I, I put out some tools to help you really, really check your relationship. And so there's a bundle of three. Uh, you can buy the individual books, but it's, it's cheaper to buy the bundle. And then I put my, my man, my men's development. There are two books out there uh, that are about men development. Uh, one's entitled, When I Became a Man. Another's entitled, which is our latest book, entitled Well Built. How many of you know that males are born, but men are built? Can I say that again? Males are born, but men are built. You don't become a man just because you get older. You don't become a man just because you can shoot a gun or produce a baby. You, you become a man when the building blocks of manhood have been placed in you. So I wrote two pieces in this bundle today to help us as fellas and to help single moms who are raising sons because there are some pitiful men out here. And some of you ladies did it. I, I, so I'm trying to help some single mothers. Some of you, isn't it interesting? I'm going to get to the word. Y'all said, man, let's just be quiet. Uh, isn't it interesting that, that we, I, I've watched single mothers, and I'm, 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 my mom was single, and, I'm, and she raised us well, but I've watched single mothers in this generation cultivate in their sons wow. traits that they don't appreciate in a partner. You cultivate in your sons. You don't let him do nothing. You don't let him do be nothing. You don't, you don't give him no work to do. He, 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 he doesn't have to clean up. He doesn't have to do anything. If anybody mess with him at school, you going up there acting a fool, talking about don't nobody mess with my baby. He can't do nothing for himself. But then 
the people that you date, single mom, you don't want them to have those same traits, but you cultivate them in your baby. And then he go ruin one of our daughters because he pitiful. Because he's looking for a replacement of his mother, just somebody he can sleep with. Okay, y'all play too much. Um, let me get to what I'm, I'm supposed to, to get to. But, but it, it's out there. I, I come in peace. I come in peace. I come in peace. I, just, I, I think that we all have to have tools to live this life. And so I just try to give you tools to put in your toolbox. Uh, amen. So the single mothers, it's going to be okay. Don't get mad at me. Let's pray so that you'll be willing to listen to the word. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're grateful and thankful, and we appreciate you so very much for all that you are. Thank you that your word is true. Pray now, Father, that you would anoint us afresh all to hear your word and anoint me to preach that your word might go forth with free course. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I happen to see our, uh, happy to see our own uh, Minister Johnny Hicks, uh, who is here on today. Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. And I want to lift verse 31 and 32. Exodus chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. And we'll take a peek at a couple of verses in chapter 3 during the sermon. But Exodus chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. If you're there, say amen. The New International Version reads like this. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go. Worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds as, as you have said and go and also bless me. Go. I want to talk about you're free to go. You're free to go. You're free to go. Freedom is meant to be one of the hallmarks of the Christian life. It's one of the hallmarks of the Christian experience, but often uh, we don't hear a lot about freedom in church. And I think we've erred in this by not focusing on freedom. We, we, we hear a lot about being delivered, but we don't hear a lot about freedom. When the reality is, is that God delivers you so that you can be free. It, we, we hear a lot in church, uh, uh, we talk a lot about being saved and healed and delivered, but the point of being saved and healed and delivered is so that, uh, yeah, so that you can be with Jesus in the afterlife, but also so that you can operate in the freedom in Christ as you live right now. I want to say this very clearly, God does not want us in bondage to anything or anyone. I need somebody to hear that. God does not want us in bondage to anything or to anyone. God does not want you addicted. God does not want you enslaved to your fleshly or human desires. God does not want you in the bondage of debt. God does not want you in the bondage of religion. God does not want you bound by the traits and the tendencies or the proclivities or the curses that have traveled through generations in your family. God wants you free. And the reality is, is that uh, there is some bondage. Y'all still here? There, there is some bondage, watch this, that you cannot get out of. You must be let go. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Watch this. The, six, the 600,000 men plus women and children could not escape Egypt. They had to be liberated. 
God sent Moses to make the request on his behalf, but God himself had to work on Pharaoh in order for Pharaoh to decide to let them go. I wish y'all see this. Watch this. The children of Israel had been in bondage for 430 years, but God now says it's time. It's time. It's time for the bondage to be over. But watch this. They can't escape. They've got to be let go. And somebody in here, if you want to be honest, there's some stuff that you haven't been able to escape. I wish I had some help in here. There's some stuff you haven't been able to escape. You've been to the altar over and over again. Pastor has talked to you. You went through the process. And you, you, know, and you went to the altar and you cried. And you told God, if you get me out of it this time, I ain't going to ever do it again. And then four and a half months later, you find yourself in the same, ain't nobody going to be a witness. You find yourself in the same situation because watch this, this bondage you can't break out of. You have to be liberated. And God sent me here this morning to tell you that your bondage is coming to an end. God sent me here to tell you that God has decided that it's time for you to be free. So he's going to work on your Pharaoh. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I wish y'all would see this. He's going to work on your Pharaoh because your Pharaoh has got to let you go. Watch this. God has decided it's time. God, you've been... You've been dealing with this. God has decided it's time. Well, the question becomes, Derek Triplett, then why now? Why, why, why now? Why now? Well, the textual narrative in chapter 3 gives us some reasons. If y'all will go with me, watch this. God says for some of you, it's time to end your misery and your suffering. Oh, God, help me. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. God says it's time for your misery to be open. One of the, over, one of the things that is so disheartening to me as a pastor to see people who only have joy in church. God's got to help me here. It is so disheartening to see people uh, after Sunday and they talk about how miserable their life is and how miserable their family is and how miserable their job is. God says he does not want you living the duplicitous life of joy on Sunday and misery Monday through Saturday. God says it's time for your misery to be over so he's got to liberate you from your misery and your suffering. Here's another reason it might be now. Watch this. God wants you to know your prayers have not been in vain. Notice what he says. He says uh, in verse 8 of chapter 3, I have heard their cries. In chapter 3, verse 9, he says, their cry has reached me. Oh, God. I'm talking to somebody in here. You, you were like the old Walter Hawkins song. I prayed and I prayed. I prayed all night long. I cried and I cried. I cried all night long. And you're wondering, is God really listening? I'm going to need some honest folk in this sermon. I've been praying this thing, asking God for deliverance, asking God for breakthrough, and I'm wondering if he's really hearing me. I can't came to tell you that your prayers have not been in vain. Your cries have not been in vain. God hears you. But here, here's another possibility. Another possibility is, is that it's time for you to start fulfilling your potential and living your promise. It's time. For you to start living your potential, 
fulfilling it and living your, your promise. Where, where, where is that in the text? Watch this, verse 8, he says, I'm come down to rescue them. Chapter 3, verse 8. I'm come down to rescue them, and then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take them out of Egypt and bring them into a good and spacious land flowing with milk and honey. Okay. He says, I got to get you out of Egypt, but I'm not just getting you out of Egypt. I'm getting you to a place where you can fulfill your promise and fulfill your potential. Can I talk to somebody in here? People who are bound cannot pursue destiny. If you're in bondage, all you can do is talk about destiny. You can't pursue it. Because in order to pursue it, you got to be liberated. People who are bound should not spend their time thinking about destiny. People who are bound should spend their time thinking about being free. I wish I had some help in here. Because if you get free, then God can get you to a place where you can fulfill your destiny. Stop trying to pursue destiny in shackles. Stop trying to pursue destiny with your hands and your feet locked up. God wants you to be free so that you can pursue destiny. Therefore, God is working on what's keeping you bound. <laughs> y'all I ain't got time to deal with all the plagues y'all read the Bible God, God, God's working on what's keeping you bound and I'm here to declare that once we finish today you're free to go Oh, God, help me here. I, that, that once we finish uh, unfolding what God wants us to know, God is un making an announcement in here. And I don't, I don't I only have a few people who are hearing it. But God is making an announcement in here that once we finish, you're free to go. That shackles are coming off of your hands. And shackles are coming off of your feet. And watch this. Shackles are coming off your mind. And Shackles are coming off your spirit. God sent me here to tell you you're free. To go. Huh. I don't know what it is. Don't tell me. I don't know you like that. But that is about to let you go. He is about to let you go. She is about to let you go. We're coming after some soul ties. He, uh, they are about to let you go. External bondage is about to let you go. Internal bondage is about to let you go. You will not, it will not be your testimony that this runs in my family. It's going to be your testimony that is stopped with me because God says, I'm letting you. You're free to go. Well, Pastor, where, where am I going? Where am I going? <laughs> I'm just a textual preacher. Where, where, where am I going? Can I show it to you in the text? Where am I going? Uh, in, in, chapter in chapter 12, watch this. Y'all still here? In chapter 12 and verse 31, watch this. I love it. Chapter 12, verse 31, Pharaoh says, Moses, Aaron. Get up, leave my people, you and all these Israelites, go and worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and your herds and go. Where, where am I going? Where am I going? First thing that the text says, watch this. The text says that the first place I'm going is up, out, and away. 
I wish y'all would see this. Notice what he says. Up. Get out. And get away. Oh God, I wish y'all would see this. Watch this. When it comes to deliverance and freedom, sometimes the initial important thing is not the new destination. Sometimes the initial important thing is where you're leaving. Oh God. And who you're getting away from. Oh, God, I wish y'all, God, help me in here. He says, you, 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 you got, don't, don't worry about the destination yet. Pay attention to where you're leaving. He says, first thing, you got to get up, which means that you got to rise. You ain't, you ain't getting out till you get up. But then he says, get out. You've got to remove yourself from some places that you have been stuck in. And then he says, get away from me, which means I'm getting ready to rid myself of some people who are unhealthy for my development. Y'all ain't got it. Get up. Elevation. Get out, exit. Get away, I'm going elsewhere. Watch this. You're about to leave some places you couldn't escape. And you're about to throw up the deuces to some people you couldn't get away from. Because some of you are stuck. God help me preach. You are stuck around some people that you cannot get to your destiny as long as you are around them. Why? Because they keep you in bondage. Because your bondage is beneficial to them. I wish y'all would get this thing. There are some people... You're never going to be free around. And the reason that you're never going to be free around them is because your bondage is to their benefit. Oh, oh, oh no, no. There's some people who want you to stay broken. There are some people who want you to stay dysfunctional. There are some people who never want your self-esteem to rise. There are some people who want you to be messed up in your spirit and messed up in your mind because as long as you are unhealthy and, and broken, they can take advantage of you. The children of Israel were enslaved because they benefited the Egyptians. Who is it that you need to get away from because being connected to them is not reciprocal? You benefit them but they don't benefit you. Huh? How, how many of you are in uh, one-way relationships? Oh, God, help me here. You're in one-way relationships. Uh, you don't benefit, but they do. You serve them, but they don't serve you. You support them, but they don't support you. You lift them up, but they don't, they don't lift you up. You encourage them, but they don't encourage you. They tell you who you're not. Because who you're not benefits them. And God's working on them. Oh, God. God's working on them. So when they decide to let you go, don't fight to stay. Oh, God, help me here. 
I got bad news for somebody. Somebody getting ready to break up with you. Somebody's getting ready to break up with you. And, it's, and, and you're going to try to fight, but you don't understand that God's been working on them because they knew that God knew that you would never break up. So he's going to make sure that he breaks up with you. God knew that you would never let them go. But so God's going to make sure that they let you go. So don't be so stuck in your feelings that you miss the move of God. Because it might just be God that they don't answer your texts anymore. <laughs> it might just be God that they have no room for you anymore, that, they, they, that, that y'all don't hang out as more. It might just be God because God knew you weren't going to get away from them. So he made sure that they got away from you. Where am I going? I'm going up. I'm, I'm going out. I'm getting away. Yeah, I'm getting away. Uh, I'm getting away. I'll let your boy. Why, why, why are you ain't around no more? I'm just. I used to could call you and give me, and you and you was always there. I know, but. Oh, oh here's the good one. But I thought you were supposed to be a Christian. I, I am, but. And it sounds harsh. But listen, when your destiny is at stake, listen, when your destiny is at stake, you don't have time for discussion. I'm sorry, I ain't trying to be hard and cold, but I really don't have time to give you an explanation. It's just over. I'm sorry, I don't have time. Don't call me no more. Don't tell, I, I really can't tell you why, uh, but it's just done. Where am I going? Next thing, next thing the text says is, I'm going to worship. I'm just reading the Bible. I wish it was deeper. I'm just reading the Bible. Uh, when Moses first went to, to Pharaoh, God told him, tell Pharaoh that you need, you need to take the people a little ways away so that you can worship me. And, and that tell them that you need to take your, your, all of your herds because you don't know what the sacrifice is going to be. So you need your resources in order to make the sacrifice to worship. He says, so tell him that you're going to worship. And that's why Pharaoh says, uh, y'all get out, go worship like you ask. But you got to understand, the word worship in, in, in that particular verse, uh, it has nothing to do with what the team led us in earlier this morning. That God is not liberating you, watch this, just so you can throw your hands up. God is not liberating you just so that you're free. Because the most time when we talk about freedom in church, where the spirit is of the Lord is, there is liberty, and then we just shout more. I wish I had some help in here. When, 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 when we want non-traditional worship, we use 2 Corinthians 3, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, and that's, that gives us the freedom to, to kneel and to dance and to shout and to run and all of that. You could Watch this. You can do all of that and still be in bondage. Oh, ain't nobody going to talk to me in here. You, I, I, I've been there. Worshiping, still in bondage. Crying out to God, still in bondage. Running around the church, still in bondage. So when God says you're free to worship, he's not talking about that. Here's what it says. The, the word literally means to serve God. It means to work for God. It means to 
toil for God. Here is where I'm going. I'm going to give God the level of servant that I could not give him while I was in bondage. I wish y'all would see this thing. That there is a quality of servant that I cannot give God until I'm liberated. And God says, I'm getting ready to free you because I know you want to be better. 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 But I've got to liberate you in order for you to serve me at the level that you really want to. Mm. <sighs> Freedom makes you able to be a better servant. From and many of us know the guilt of serving God in bondage. And somebody in here needs to be honest. God has not seen the quality of servant you can be until you begin to walk in a new measure of freedom. Oh God, I wish I would see this. There is a new measure of freedom that will raise the quality of servant that you are. You will not serve him. I got to go. You will not serve him differently and better as long as you're bound. As long as you're bound by debt. Impact Sunday's coming up in December. Some of you are sitting there, I wish I could do it. Those of you who, who, who won't do it, in many cases, it's not because you shouldn't have been able to. That God provided enough income for you to do it, but you are in so much debt that there is a bondage. And so you are stuck. Some of us will never be the quality of servant that we could be until we're no longer bound by the lust of the flesh. Oh, okay. Okay, y'all gonna, gonna play like that? Y'all really gonna play like that? Y'all really gonna play like, like uh, the flesh never affects you when you in church? That, 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 that envy and jealousy and... Uh, that, that, you, that you can be in worship. At, uh, oh, okay, wrong church. Y'all too mature for this. But, but, but you can be in church and the wrong person walk by and it totally wrecks your flow. Okay, so the fellas are going to act like that you ain't ever been. The fellas, are, you're going to act like that sometimes you just have to come to church and, and, and go through the whole service with your eyes closed. I wish I had some help in here. Uh, because you're trying to keep yourself in, okay, you're trying to keep yourself in check. But what happens? What kind of freedom? What level of servant can you be once God breaks that bondage? Y'all still here? Huh. Once you get free from that emotional pain, once you get free from that bondage because of the breaking that you experience, once you get free from guilt and recognize that Jesus really did pay it all, once you get liberated, then God will get a better servant. God wants to liberate your mind, liberate your spirit, liberate your resources so that you can become a better servant. Somebody ought to yell, Lord, liberate me. Liberate me, liberate me, liberate. I want to be a better servant. I want to be a higher quality servant. I want to be a higher quality preacher. I want to be a, highly, a higher quality worship. God, liberate me. Let me give you this. I got, watch this. Where am I going? I'm going up out and away. 
Where am I going? I'm going to worship. What does that mean? I'm going to be a better quality servant. Then finally, I, I, I've alluded to it already. Uh, where are you going? You're going to your place of promise to fulfill your potential. Woo! I wish you would say it with me. I'm going to my place of promise to fulfill my potential. Here's what the text says, uh, Exodus 3, verse 8. He says, I'm taking them out of Egypt. Deliverance is always two-sided. God delivers me from in order to deliver me to. He delivers me from in order for him to deliver me to. So the first year you testify, the things I used to do, I don't do anymore. I'm with you. The second year you testify, the things I used to do, I don't do anymore. I'm with you. But the third year you testify, the things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Then I'm asking the question, well, what do you do now? You've told me for five years what you don't do anymore. Can you tell me what do you do? Because I'm no longer impressed that you don't cuss no more. I'm no longer impressed that you don't sleep around no more. I'm no longer impressed. I, what do you do? Because deliverance is two-sided. He delivers me from so he can deliver me to. Where are you delivering me to? I'm taking you, I love it, to a good and spacious land. Uh-oh. First thing he's telling you, he's got a space for you. God has a space for me. I'm not hating on your space. Because your space ain't my space. I ain't got no help in here. I'm not hating on your place because your place ain't my place. And I am not one who believes that there's only room, only a little bit of room at the top. Because here's what I've discovered about God, that your top ain't the only top that there is. I got a top that he's trying to get me to. I don't have to climb your mountain. I have the mountain of my own. He has space for me and some of you are feeling like where do I fit I, I ain't nobody I'm strange nobody's like me my own mama calls me strange but I decided that God has space for me somebody ought to praise him for that right now God has space for me. Then no, notice what he says. It's a good land. In the Hebrew, it means desirable. Now, this may not bless you, but it blessed me. It means that wherever God is taking me, I'm going to like it. I'm not going to be forced into something I don't want to do. Not my will, but your will be done. God says he's taking you to a desirable space. He is taking you someplace that you are going to like. Uh-oh, I just heard from him. That's why he's changing your taste before he gets you to your space. Because he's going to make sure that your appetite gets better because what you've been liking ain't good enough for you. So he's changing your appetite. You know that, that psalm, delight yourselves in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart? It really means that he, it, it's not that he'll give you what you desire. 
What it means is he'll give you the desires you're supposed to have. Is there anybody other than me? God's been changing what you like. You used to like that, but you don't like that no more. You used to like that, but you don't like that no more. He's changing what you like. And if he's changing what you like, it's a sign he's getting you ready for your space. Somebody says it's a good space. I'm going to like this space. I'm going to like this space. I'm going to like this space. I got to go watch this. It's a good space. But notice what he says. And it's a spacious space. God has not freed me on the inside to put me in a narrow space on the outside. God said, no more confinement, no more being cramped, no more constricted space, that it is a spacious space. Which means that you don't have to do one thing. You don't have to do one thing. All he told them is when you get to the promised land, honor me and be productive. He didn't tell them you got to do this, you got to do that. Some of you are bigger than one thing. And God's going to give you the space that can handle the multiple things that he has put inside of you. Ain't nobody talking to me. Oh, oh. A friend of mine puts it like this. A friend, my, my friend Tamil says this. I, I, was, I was talking to her. I'm like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I'm trying to make this stuff fit together. She says, Derek, if God is omni, then why can't you be multi? Oh, God. If God is omni and you're his child, then why can't you be multi? So some of you, you only do one thing, that's cool, but there's some other people that God has given you multiple gifts and multiple passions and multiple skills, and he says he's given you a space that is spacious enough to handle it. It's a good space it's a desirable space it's 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 a spacious space then finally I'm done because uh, uh, I want everybody I, I know how to be obedient uh, so when 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 the the, the pastors give uh, uh, pastor David the report they will be able to say he stopped on time <laughs> Oh, no, I, I've been doing this too long. I, 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 please understand. I know how to follow directions. Please understand. Can I give that somebody? Elevation often comes with being able to follow directions. Opportunities come with being able to follow directions. Watch this. I got to go. I got three minutes. You got to get this fast. He says, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Uh, it's flowing. We are not rationing. We're flowing. God says you're going to a place where you can be super productive and abundantly fruitful because the place is flowing. So if it's flowing, we ain't got to argue because it's flowing. If it's flowing, I ain't got to think that you got the only opportunity. 
because your opportunity ain't my opportunity if it's flowing then I ain't got to fight you and be envious over you because that ain't the last blessing that God has so the matter of fact uh, I hope you get your blessing I want you to get your blessing as a matter of fact I'm going to shout when you get your blessing because I'm so secure in the blessing that's coming my way that I can shout and give God glory for whatever happens to you It's flowing. It's flowing. And I got to free you to go take advantage of it. Let me give you this. Uh, my, 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 my children are good and grown. Uh, they're, they're good and grown. Uh, they're, uh, Destiny's 31. Donovan's turning 29. But, but as a parent, you still remember everything. So uh, we, live in, we lived in Daytona. And on the beach in Daytona, they built this, uh, this park called uh, Daytona Lagoon. I don't, I don't even know if it's still there. I haven't been over that side. I just, I just started going back to the city. So I don't even know if it's still there. But, but Daytona Lagoon was a big arcade kind of like Dave and Buster's, all these kind of games and, and you, you get your tokens and you, t and you win tickets and all that. But then it was also a water park. So you, you, you could play your arcade and this. So I remember the first time we took Destiny and Donovan to Daytona Lagoon and they saw all those games and they saw that water park and they were ready to take off running. But uh, their mom and I we had to hold them because although they saw what was possible, it wasn't time for them to take off. Why? Because we had to pay for their credentials and then get their tokens. And then once we paid for their credentials, they put that, 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 that thing on their wrist to show that we not only paid for the arcade, but we paid for uh, the water park. So to show that credential meant we can go wherever we want to go. But they didn't understand that all of that had to be paid for. They just saw it and was ready to run after it. But we had to go to the counter and pay for their credentials. But watch this. As soon as we paid for their credentials and as soon as we bought them tokens, we told our children, you're free to go. <laughs> you are free to go. You are free free to take advantage of everything that your parents paid for. I came to tell you that God has paid for your credentials. I came to tell you that God has bought your tokens and that now you are free to go. You're free to go. You're free to go. You're free to go. You're free to go. Uh, you're free to go. Thank you, musicians. Stay there. But, but I'm, I'm getting ready to, to give the lyrics of an old song. Some of you may not even know it. Uh, it was by the time he said, said I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer. Pow. No more. Chains. Holding me. God is working on your Pharaoh. And you are free to go. Free to go. No more bondage. No more being stuck. You are free.
free to go. Would you stand to your feet and lift your hands? Some of you are about to experience something you've never experienced and that's true freedom I come against generational curses that have had you bound I do not care if your grandmother was like that and your mother was like that and your, all your aunts were like that. I declare by the power of Jesus' name, you, ma'am, are free to go. Sir, I don't care if that's run in the family, every male in your family, the buck stops today. Sir, you are free to go. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for liberty. Somebody shout free. Father, thank you for liberty. Somebody shout free. Father, we're tired of being bound. We're tired of being held back. We're tired of being stuck. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are people who are dealing with bondage and their bondage is so hidden that nobody knows anything about it. They've learned how to fake it. But God, in the name of Jesus, we declare that shackles are broken. We declare that fetters are loosed. They are free to go. Free to go. Free to go. There's some people, God, that we're going to have to get used to being away from. There's some people we're going to have to get used to them not being in our circle because we got to get away from them. And we declare now that we have the strength and we're free to go. In the name of Jesus. the name of Jesus let the free people give God worship right now